Hey there, pilots and astronauts. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk you through the autopilot in Resolume Arena and Avenue. The autopilot is a feature that allows us to create automated sequences of clips. You define the behavior of the autopilot and from there on it's, well, automatic. This feature is useful in many different applications. Maybe you're a lighting technician who needs to run some visuals on the site, or you want to queue up a series of ads in between the shows. Or maybe you just need to take a break during a full night of club visuals. In all these scenarios, the autopilot will have you covered. During this tutorial, I'll be using Resolume Arena 7.22. But the autopilot is also available in Resolume Avenue. Let's get piloting. The autopilot will be visible in your composition, group, layer and clip panels by default. If not, navigate to the view menu and select Show Autopilot. The behavior of the autopilot can be defined on a composition, group or layer level. In this first section we'll cover the basics and we'll be focusing on the layer level. Here I have a composition with clips loaded onto a layer. When I select the layer and navigate to the layer panel, we'll find the autopilot tab. By default the autopilot will be off, set to loop and listening to the clip transport. We can activate the autopilot by selecting a direction. With the current settings, the layer will play each clip fully and then jump to the next clip. At the end of the layer, it will loop back to the beginning of the layer. If we wish to disable the looping at the end, we can toggle off the loop toggle. This only indicates that the entire autopilot needs to loop. In contrast, the clip loops parameter sets how many times a clip will loop until jumping to the next clip. As you can see, when I set it to 2, the clips will loop twice before moving on. Instead of waiting for the entire clip to finish, we can also set the duration to beats or seconds. This allows us to have an autopilot that is synchronized with either time or the BPM. In addition to the layer autopilot, we can also have a group or composition autopilot. These autopilots will trigger columns rather than clips. They function virtually the same, so I will only demonstrate the composition autopilot here. Let's do a quick example. As with layers, I first need to set a direction, but unlike layers, we need to make sure a column is playing in order to get the autopilot going. Now that everything is set, the composition autopilot is doing its thing and the show is playing by itself. Because we are working with columns rather than clips, we have some additional duration settings. The autopilot can listen to the longest or shortest clip within a column. Alternatively, it can listen to either the relative top or bottom clip. Additionally, we can set a master layer to follow, but we'll get back to this in a bit. For now, let's dive a little deeper into each setting of the autopilot, starting with direction. Autopilots can be set either in forward, backward or random direction. Since you are probably clever enough to figure out forward and backwards by yourself, let's have a look at random instead. When selecting the random direction mode, an additional tab will open, which allows you to set the operating mode. The other and any modes will jump to a random clip or column within the autopilot. The difference between the two is that the any mode can also trigger the currently playing clip or column, where the other mode will ignore itself. The bag mode will put all clips or columns into a virtual bag, pulling them out one at a time. This ensures that all clips and columns will be played once before refilling the bag. As demonstrated before, the duration settings can vary depending on whether you are using a column autopilot like the composition and group or working with a layer. All three autopilots can work with a seconds or beats duration. In this example, I have set the composition autopilot to 4 beats. Note that when the resync button is hit, the countdown towards the next column will be restarted. The resync button will also restart autopilot countdowns that are in seconds, but only if the global transport setting is set to BPM sync and timeline, which is the default setting as of Resolume 7.22. On to the next duration mode. Clip Transport. This duration mode is available on layers and on the column autopilots when using a master layer. This one is really simple. The next clip starts when the current timeline is at an end. 
note that this mode allows you to set a loop count. This parameter controls how many times the current clip or column will loop before moving on. The longest and shortest clip settings are only available in the column autopilots and do what they say on the tin. The autopilot will look at either the shortest or longest clip in the current column and use the end of that clip to trigger the next column. In this example I am using the shortest clip setting. The autopilot will look at the duration of each clip according to the duration set in the clip panel. When you manually change the clip autopilot duration to transport, which we'll get back to in a bit, the amount of loops is taken into account when determining the longest clip. The top and bottom settings will look either at the top or bottom clips in the current column for their duration. The most important thing to understand here is that empty clips are not taken into account, as can be seen in this example. The group and composition autopilots have the ability to follow a master layer. You choose which layer to use as a master layer and the autopilot will follow that layer. All changes made on the master layer will affect the autopilots following that layer. Note that the duration options are adjusted when using a master layer. Essentially you are creating a single layer to drive your entire show. By using clip and column actions with a master layer you can create advanced sequences which are great for controlling pre-programmed shows and presentations. Talking about clip actions, it's about time we have a look at them. So far I have told you that once the duration condition of an autopilot is met, we go to the next clip or column. But this is not always true. Real autopilot wizards add clip actions to spice things up even further. In the clip panel, under the autopilot tab, we can find the action and duration. By default, a clip will listen to the autopilot settings of the layer it is on. But here you can override the layer settings with an action, like play first, play next and play specific clip. Using actions allows you to create multiple autopilot sequences within a single deck. Besides overwriting the layer action, we also have the option to override the layer duration on a per clip basis. When working with either the composition or group autopilot, you want to use column actions instead. To do this, first make sure that the column panel is visible. This can be done through the view menu. Next we select a column, navigate to the column panel and adjust the action and duration just like we would for a clip action. Do note that column actions are ignored when using a master layer as the master layer and its clip settings are in control. That was pretty much all you need to know about getting your autopilot license. Fly safely. If you wish to dive even deeper into the autopilot, make sure to read up on our autopilot article. I will leave a link in the video description and I will see you in the next video.